Having roommates can be great fun or it can be a total nightmare. Many men find themselves living with roommates at some point in their life, either in a college dorm or in a house share with other professionals in a city. Perhaps you're still in high school but you're moving to college soon or you're preparing to move to a new town where you will be sharing a house with other people. When I lived in London as a college student and a graduate, I always had roommates. In fact, I once lived in a house with seven women and I was the only man. I can assure you that wasn't as fun as it might sound, but it did teach me a lot about being a good roommate and living respectfully with others. So in this video, I'm going to share with you six etiquette rules that I learned from that time, which will go a long way into creating a harmonious living situation for you. The first rule of being a good roommate is to immediately clean up after yourself. When you live by yourself, you can decide when you want to clean up the mess you've made. For example, if you've made a sandwich, you might want to go and sit down and watch a TV show, enjoy that sandwich before going back and clearing up all the crumbs and putting the condiments away. But when you live with others, you don't have that privilege. Common spaces like the kitchen can be used by anyone at any time and they should expect to find them clean. So when you do make a mess with making a beverage or cooking, make sure that you always leave the kitchen exactly as you found it. The same goes for if you have a party with some friends over. When you live alone, you might decide to save the cleaning up for the morning after. But with roommates, it's unfair to leave them to wake up with dirty glasses and the sofa all messy. In many roommate situations, you will have a schedule or a rota for chores like taking out the trash, uh, buying dishwasher tablets or cleaning the bathroom. However, I can warn you that it's highly unlikely everyone will stick to that agreement. Some people in your house will get lazy and chores will go undone. Of course, it's best to reconvene with your roommates and get a consensus on the schedule so that everyone plays their part. But what if things keep getting missed? I believe that as a gentleman, this is when you man up and just do them yourself. A self-respecting man does not want a dirty bathroom or a kitchen with the trash can overflowing, whether it's his turn to do it or not. So when I lived in London, we had a weekly rota for who would take the trash out. But inevitably, this job kept getting missed. I decided that because I was the only man in the house, I would just do this chore. After all, I definitely wasn't going to tell the 22-year-old girl living next to me that she should put her dressing gown on and go and take the bins out at 10 p.m. on a December evening. I decided to simply man up and take this responsibility. So don't become overly petty about the chores schedule. Instead, do things as they need to be done. Sharing a bathroom is undoubtedly the worst part of living with roommates. It's from this experience that you truly understand how unpleasant both men and women can be. But as a gentleman, you're not going to create any unpleasantries for others. Whether your roommates want to buy one or not, always invest in an air freshener. Make sure there is enough toilet roll for the next person and change the roll if necessary. And keep a spare refill of soap under the sink so nobody ever has to do that trick where they fill up the tiny bit of soap that's left with water to make it last longer. Although women leaving their long hair clogging the shower can drive us mad, we as men can also be guilty of not noticing when we've left stubble in the sink. I recommend keeping a box of wipes in the bathroom so you can give the counter a once over when you're done using it. Now we come to another thing I hated about living with roommates, but it's something we must be considerate of. In a house share, you have to somewhat live your life on the schedule of others. For example, if you like to wake up early as I do and play music, that's going to wake others up when they're trying to sleep in. If you're more of a night owl and you want to be banging around in the kitchen making a late night snack, that's also going to disturb your roommates. So anytime it's early or late, Keep your noise and activity to a minimum. It's fine to be quietly working away in your room, but don't do anything that could disturb other people. Even something as simple as a hairdryer could wake up the person in the next room. So consider how you might have to adapt your morning and evening routines to be considerate of others. If your house sharing goes well, hopefully you will become good friends with some of the people that you live with. I certainly did, and that meant we would spend some time hanging out in each other's rooms. The danger of this is if we overstep other people's personal boundaries 
or they overstep hours. I once accidentally walked in on my female roommate, spread eagle shaving her private parts. To respect the personal space of others, I recommend giving them a text before going into their room. Generally, an open door means they're open to socializing and a closed door is a request for privacy. In my defense, the woman in my story had left her door wide open and there was an emergency, which is why I had to go in there so quickly. I recommend that you follow the policy of closing your door when you want privacy and locking it when you want to do something intimate. You might also wish to organize social activities with your roommates outside of the home rather than being in the house all the time. And if someone is in Approaching on your personal boundaries, politely let them know and tell them what kind of cues and indicators to look for in the future. For example, you could tell them, I don't like you coming into my room late at night when my door's closed without knocking, so in future just give me a text first. In most house share situations, there will be agreed upon communal items and then people will also have their personal items kept in the communal space. For example, the pots and pans might be for everyone, but your roommate might have an air fryer that they keep out on the counter. I would recommend that you wait to be invited to use these personal items, rather than just assuming that they'll be okay with it. The reason I recommend waiting for an invite rather than asking is because they might feel pressured into saying yes, even when they don't want to. If they do allow you to use their things, treat them better than you would treat your own possessions. Always clean them thoroughly after using them and put them back exactly as you found them. The aim is to be so respectful that they wouldn't even notice that you'd used it. If you do break it or damage it in any way, and you know, life happens, just replace it immediately. This also might be your cue to buy your own one for the future. Also, never eat food that doesn't belong to you. If you become friends with your roommates, you might agree to share certain things like milk or condiments, but you must have a verbal agreement in place before assuming that that's okay. Generally, being a good roommate is all about treating others how you would wish to be treated. But there are so many aspects to living with other people that it's hard to remember them all. And what's more, there are some things that wouldn't bother you, but that might bother other people. That's where etiquette and following some basic rules of manners really comes in handy. And as you move on with life and eventually live with a girlfriend or wife, a lot of the principles that you learn from living with roommates will go on to create a much more harmonious living situation with her. Gentlemen, I want to hear from you. If you are currently living with roommates, what's one thing that you wish they would be more respectful of? Perhaps others in the comments will notice that they also do this and it will inspire them to change their behavior. Until the next one, I highly encourage you to check out the previous video I made in this series on etiquette, which is all about the gym. Thank you for watching today's episode and I will speak with you in the comments.